and welcome to this week's episode of The Bark for Butler 360 Sports. I'm your host, Taryn Plowman. And I'm Ryan Roach. Taryn, what do we have in store for this week's episode? So we actually have a really exciting episode. We're going to start off with an all-sports recap featuring the men's basketball team. And then we're going to have one-on-one -on -one interviews with softball player Jenna Foreman and senior swimmer Emily Motil. But first, let's take a look what happened this week in Butler Sports. Butler's first game of the week saw the Bulldogs take on the Georgetown Hoyas Tuesday at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Starting the night off, the Hoyas took an early lead and held on through the second half. Marcus Derrickson led the Hoyas in scoring and tied his career-high 27 points on 11 of 13 shooting. Keelan Martin was held to a quiet night but still shot 22 points overall, shooting 8 for 23. Butler would begin to rally in the second half and it looked like they could take over the lead after Sean McDermott and Kamar Baldwin teamed up with this steal. Oh, nearly a steal and it is a steal! Baldwin lays it in! Baldwin tried to tie the game with seconds left but fell short as Butler fell to Georgetown with a final score of 87-83. Coming off their three-game losing streak, Butler hosted Providence at home on Saturday. The Bulldogs kept the game close early, swapping the lead with the Friars several times in the first half. The second half would hold the main story of the game, though, as Butler locked down their defense, with Providence shooting 5 of 32 and only 19 points after the break. Keelan Martin led the way in scoring with 19 points of his own, and Paul Jorgensen added 12, and Tyler Weidman and freshman point guard Aaron Thompson combined for 15 rebounds. The second half stand gave Butler the victory over Providence 69-54, snapping their losing streak and keeping their tournament hopes alive. The Bulldogs will host Creighton on Tuesday this week and have the weekend off before two road games next week against St. John's and Seton Hall. Claire with the women's basketball highlights. The Butler women's basketball team snapped their six-game losing streak with a win over Providence on February 16th. Junior Michelle Weaver scored a season-high 20 points in the 69-48 win. The Bulldogs outscored the Friars 22-8 in the second quarter, with junior Tori Schickel scoring six straight points in the paint. Schickel finished with 12 points, seven rebounds, and six assists. On February 18th, the Bulldogs suffered a tough loss to Creighton, 64-55. The Bulldogs shot 36% from field goal range and trailed Creighton in all four quarters. Tori Schickel led the Bulldogs with 20 points, eight rebounds, and two assists, and Whitney Jennings had 10 points, four rebounds, and five assists. The Bulldogs will play Xavier on the road next week as their final game of the regular season. The Butler University men's tennis team started their 2018 season with a rocky start. Their first three matches resulted in the Bulldogs having a 1-2 record. Since then, Butler has moved their record to 5-2. The last three matches, the Bulldogs defeated the University of Indianapolis, Youngstown State University, and the Valparaiso University Crusaders. The Bulldogs have still yet to play a conference match, but that hasn't stopped them from their four-match winning streak that they currently hold. The Dogs are traveling to West Lafayette, Indiana this Saturday, February 24th at 9 a.m. They will be taking on the University of Wisconsin Green Bay Flash the Phoenix, who have a record of 1-4 this season, and will be stepping onto the court with a three-match losing streak. They were defeated by the University of Wisconsin, Marquette University, and Northern Illinois University. Come out and support your dogs to hopefully get their fifth straight win in a row against the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. Butler women's tennis team went two and one in Rhode Island this past weekend. On Friday, the Bulldogs lost to Bryant two to five, but defeated Rhode Island six to one later that day. On Saturday, Butler swept Big East opponent Providence seven to zero. The Bulldogs will play Gustavus Adolphus College in Indianapolis next weekend. The Butler women's lacrosse team lost 12-2 this past weekend at Michigan in their first game of the season. The Bulldogs were down 10-0 until freshman Karina Latsko scored the first goal of the season for the Bulldogs. The team will host Louisville in their home opener on February 22nd. Butler sophomore Logan Sabins won the Invitational at Savannah Harbor this past weekend for men's golf. His 54-hole score of 7 under 209 won the event by two strokes. Butler finished sixth overall in the Invitational. As the Butler women's swim team prepares for the Big East Championship in Ohio, reporter Taryn Plowman takes us to the HRC pool to interview swimmer Emily Motel. I'm here with swimmer Emily Motel. So, Emily, can you tell me a little bit about your season? Yeah, so our season's coming to a close. We are just about to compete in the Big East next week, so yeah. that's going to be really exciting. Congrats. Thank you. We're almost there. It's a long season. It's about like five, six months, so yeah. a lot of hard work, but we're almost there, finish line. Great. Has your whole team qualified for the Big East Championship? 
Um, so 26 of our girls are competing at the East, which okay. is awesome, which is the highest number we've ever had at Butler. Wow. Um, so that's pretty cool. And we get the opportunity to score 18 of those goals. Yeah. Um, that can build points for Butler and increase our standings. That's awesome. So then as a senior on this team, and that's the highest number of girls you've ever qualified, mm -hmm. how proud does that make you of this team? Yeah, it's crazy. I've seen Butler swimming grow from being a team of 18 girls to being a team of 36. Wow. So from my freshman year to senior year, it's been huge improvements. Our time has gone faster. It's yeah. definitely the fastest team Baller swimming has ever seen in the history, so yeah. it's really exciting to see what we'll accomplish next week. Yeah, you can definitely see that on the record board. Yeah. Like, this has definitely been a high accomplishing team. Mm -hmm. So, who has stood out to you the most in the pool, and who has stood out the most to you out of the pool? Interesting. So, in our pool, we have a lot of good recurring um, sophomores and juniors. I think our sophomore class is really, really strong. Yeah. Um, we have some really great sprinters. We have some really great distance girls. Um, I think sophomore Grace Jebeck is going to have a great season. She okay. always is a performer for us. Mm -hmm. um, I think junior Tori Horton um, is going to do some great things. She's a great sprinter and she's been working really, really hard. Our freshmen are insane yeah. this year. So speaking of captains, any mm -hmm. idea who's going to take the captaincy next year? Um, that's kind of up in the air. We do a team vote okay. um, every year, so it's kind of majority rule. So every girl writes down the three girls that they want to be captain. Okay. And they can't vote for themselves, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then our coach goes over it, reviews it, and that's how basically it is. But um, we only have, I think, four, four juniors this year. Okay. Um, but I think Megan Rush was a captain this year, and she was a junior. So yeah. I think she definitely will take over because she knows what to do. Yeah. So, but the rest of them are up in the air, and I know that all picks are good picks. Yeah, it seems like it's a well-deserved captaincy for her. Yeah, for sure. She's worked really hard. So when do you guys leave for the championship meet? We leave Tuesday, but the meet starts Wednesday. Okay. Well, congratulations Thank to you guys, and good luck with the meet. Thank you. Fellow Bark reporter Jimmy LaFakis had a chance to sit down with the softball team's leadoff hitter, Jenna Foreman. Let's take a look. Jenna Foreman is a junior outfielder for the Bulldogs. She patrols right field and has started all nine games this season. Her five stolen bases and 484 batting average lead the team, and she sets the table so the rest of the dogs can eat. My role this year as lead off hitter is definitely to get on base um, and steal bases, just to get on for our big hitters to knock me in and score runs. Um, I'm kind of just doing whatever the team needs me to do. If it's laying down a bunt or uh, running out a slap or even swinging away a little bit. Um, but I definitely just want to get on base so the big boppers can knock me in and help us win some games. When Foreman arrived on campus, there was some confusion. Head coach Scott Hall had to think fast. He gave her a nickname and it stuck. Uh, so my nickname is Jet. Um, freshman year when I got here, our assistant coach's name was also Jenna, so it was really confusing when coach and other players would be like, Jenna or Jen, and we would both always look, so we were like, we need to get this kid a nickname, so my coach came up with Jet because I'm quick, and it's kind of stuck ever since. After reaching the NCAA tournament her freshman year, the Bulldogs came up short in last season's Big East tournament. We competed pretty well, but fell short and didn't get to go to the NCAA tournament. That's definitely one of our goals this year, though, and I think we're more than capable of uh, getting if we keep working hard. Reporting for The Bark, I'm Jimmy LaFakis. I am joined by fellow Bark reporter Chris Brown, who's here to give us an update on the baseball and softball teams. So Chris, let's start with the baseball team. How did they perform over the weekend? Absolutely. The baseball team got off to a really strong start to start the season. Uh, they went 4-0 in their opening weekend in an Invitational in North Carolina. They had two wins over Lehigh University, both by wide margins. They also defeated North Carolina Wilmington. And in the final day of the Invitational, had a comeback win over Eastern Kentucky. So they're off to a really great start, 4-0 record to start the season. Outfielder Garrick Parker leads the team uh, in home runs now. He hit his first home run over the weekend. Also, outfielder Harrison Freed leads the team with nine RBI. And infielder and pitcher Garrick Chrisman um, has also hitting over 500 to begin the season on the mound. Chrisman also leads the team in innings pitched with six innings and has an ERA right around three to start the season. 
Wow, it sounds like these Bulldogs are after a very impressive start. Absolutely. All right, so let's switch gears. We'll go from baseball to softball. How has the softball team been doing? So the softball team hasn't gotten off to quite as good of a start. They played in two five-game invitationals over the past two weekends. They're two and seven right now, mm -hmm. but they have faced some tough competition. Texas A&M, the sixth ranked team in the country, being one of the teams they've played actually twice. So there is reason for optimism there. Junior outfielder Jenna Foreman leads the team with five stolen bases and is hitting around 500 to start the season. Infielders Alyssa Locke and infielder and pitcher Caitlin Dowd each have four RBI. And on the mound, freshman Alyssa Graves is off to a great start. She leads the team with 25 innings pitched and has an ERA just north of two. So that's a really great start um, for her in her Butler career. Yeah, wow, I can't wait to see what, how else they keep performing. All right, so what's coming up for the softball team? So for the softball team, they will have a weekend off before returning to action in another five game invitational in Nashville, Tennessee in early March. And then also on the baseball side, they get returned to action this upcoming weekend with a three game series in South Carolina against George Mason University. All right, well, that all sounds great. Thank you so much for joining me. And we will keep you guys updated with the teams as they continue through their seasons. And that's all the time we have for this week's edition on The Bark. Tune in next week as we sit down with baseball player Tyler Houston and reporter Zach Horrell gets a crash course in lacrosse. That's an episode you guys are not going to want to miss. I'm Taryn Plowman. And I'm Ryan Roach. And from everyone here at The Bark, thanks for watching.